Good evening. This is the National Weather Service office in Medford, Oregon, with a precipitation and forecast update. It's nice to at least be able to provide an update that includes the chance of precipitation in the in the forecast, but it's been a while since we've had any, at least for portions of our forecast area, uh, much of our forecast area. So we're going to get into that. Here's what we'll talk about. How dry are we? We'll try to put it into a little bit of context, give a little bit of reasoning for why it's occurring. And then we'll discuss uh, when's the rain and mountain snow coming back? Uh, or is it coming back? All right. So first, let's just take a peek at the satellite imagery. This is what's causing the dry weather. You can see all the weather, all the moisture. This this is the water vapor imagery. So um, shows kind of the mid levels of the atmosphere, moisture in there, and uh, the reds are drier, and the blues and and uh, grays indicate generally more moisture in the mid and upper levels. And you can see all that moisture is riding up into British Columbia and down around and into uh, the central and eastern United States, whereas the west remains, you know, everything's going up and around us. And that has been unbelievably persistent uh, in a record fashion. And we will show that now in the form of how long has it actually been dry for. So here is precipitation. I know we kind of focused on Medford. That's where our office is, but it's also kind of gives a good context for our forecast area, because it's kind of in the middle of our forecast area, um, maybe a little west of center, but it provides a good uh, a good reference. Not the driest part in our forecast area, but certainly not the wettest. So, so this is going to be focused on Medford, and you can see this goes uh, the bottom. The x-axis here at the bottom goes uh, starts at uh, November 11th. I'm sorry, November 1st, 2021, and it ends uh, today or the ninth, uh, a couple of days ago, but it goes through the 11th, it's been the same. And you can just get a feeling for how our precipitation's been. The, the y-axis here on the left is um, daily precipitation in inches. And you can see it's generally kind of feast or famine, right? We get a lot there in early November, then kind of cools off mid to late November, uh, even early December, and then really picks up mid-December and early January, and then it just shuts off. So currently we've had 35 consecutive days without measurable precipitation in Medford. The record streak for December, January, February, March, April, May, generally the wetter months in the uh, year for Medford is 37 consecutive days set in 1926. We will tie this at least the reason why we might not surpass it is because rain is possible on Monday. So that gives a context of our precipitation this winter, this wet season. And now uh, let's go on to where we sit. And again, this is our precipitation tracker. You can find this and you can find the, the satellite imagery we looked at, the radar and satellite loop here on our homepage, weather.gov forward slash Medford. And here is the precipitation tracker. So you click on this and, and we see, uh, takes our climate sites, what we use to kind of monitor climate, the sites that we use, observation sites, and uh, shows us the uh, precipitation since October 1st right now, current, and then what our normal precipitation is since October 1st. So you can see all the red dots, everyone has a red dot that shows below normal precipitation, you can see in North Bend, it's 80% of normal, or in other words, 20% below normal for this time of year. The green bar is smaller than the blue bar. And you can see every site is that way. Klamath Falls, you have to kind of mouse over to see 68% of normal or 32% below normal. So every site is below normal for this time of year uh, since October 1st. Now, let's get into the question of, is rain, mountain snow coming and when? Okay, so 
here is a plot. Yeah, this isn't, this is kind of in-house due to some firewall issues that have trouble surpassing, but it's an in-house image taking all 30 of the American kind of uh, mini model runs or ensemble members and putting them together. And it shows you the, the, the red, blue, and gray kind of shaded area is temperatures at 5,000 feet. We like to monitor that to show how kind of cold or warm the air mass is. And then you can see the uh, precipitation, these boxes down here that represents precipitation. The amount of precipitation is here on the, uh, the uh, left-hand side of the chart. So you can see, what do you see here? A big cold front, right? Look at this, look at these temperatures just fall like a rock there. So uh, this is snow level. So you can see if it precipitated today, the snow level would be way above Crater Lake. Crater Lake would be getting rain. But as we go down, cold front comes through Monday and some precipitation arrives. Not a lot, but some, so that's good. And some of it will be in form of snow in the mountains for sure. Um, you can see Sexton Pass at about 2,000 feet. Uh, you know, it shows snow levels dipping below that a little bit, but with all the warm soil temperatures that we have, uh, probably not expecting any impact in you know, those types of passes and maybe just a little bit of snow in the mountains, several inches of snow possible in the Cascades. And then what happens after that? Uh, reasonable confidence. Uh, you can see this is spread. The colors are spread out a little more, so a little less confidence, a little spread in the models. But uh, generally, they show increasing temperatures again, another ridge as if we needed another one, right? Uh, then moving further out in time towards next weekend, another potential, and this could be a shift, a real shift in pattern uh, late February to a wetter pattern. We're gonna tell you more about that in a second. So now I'm going to show you even more information, more data if you want to see it. Um, again, this is kind of an in-house weather service thing that takes uh, all the models, European, American, Canadian, all kinds of model data, and, and shows it in one. So what I want you to just focus on is the, are these green bars down here? You can see um, uh, come around the 14th Valentine's Day and into the 15th, um, you're seeing some rain or some precipitation uh, moving into the area. And you can see these lines, this line graph up here kind of starts to tick upwards, right? Showing accumulated precipitation. And then they every all the lines stay steady, right? Because we're not getting any precipitation. And then watch as we head to is that the 20th of February, all the lines start to tick upwards again. So these are averages. Each line represents an average of a bunch of models from the same system. So an average of all the European models, an average of all the American. And so it's suggesting some precipitation resumes and maybe continues for a while. But we're going to look at one more piece of data that takes all these hundred different kind of mini models or ensemble members and it separates them into groups. So this is getting kind of uh, technical, but if you're interested, you're sticking with us here, you can see this is valid between the eight and 10 days. So the 72 hour period ending Monday, February 21st or 0Z on the zero UTC on the February 22nd. So kind of late February, um, you can see one group of models, 19% show just a teeny bit of precipitation entering maybe Roseburg. Cluster two suggests a lot of uh, precipitation across the area or at least a broad area of precipitation, 20% of members of the 100 members are showing that about 19%. Uh, then 41% are showing a little bit of precipitation edging into our area. And then lastly, 21% are showing uh, a good bit of rain, but mainly focused north of the California-Oregon border. So if we tally this up, 40% of members are showing some you know, broad, potentially significant precipitation, 60% showing very little. So it's still up in the air, but it's way more than we've seen recently in the models in the extended period. Um, so there is some hope that we transition into a more active pattern. Uh, come, you know, maybe the 21st of February or so. But again, some rain on the near term, then a break, and then uh, another potential. 
Uh, thanks for listening. And again, anytime you want, you can, um, you know, go to weather.gov forward slash Medford, check out forecasts, and uh, we'll hope to update this uh, with more videos in the future.